What's going on YouTube? Josh here and today we're doing something a little bit different. I know I normally make kind of meta videos, kind of like uh, this is how much money you can make and this is what I did to get a job, but no, we're doing something a little bit more practical today. We're going to be uh, finding a job that fits my skill set in this particular situation and three different resumes, one's for the boot camp grad, one for the college grad, and one for the self-taught slash career switch here. Two cover letters, the professional cover letter and the passionate cover letter. These are the ones that I use. I have a standard and I kind of change them. I'm going to point out what makes a resume good, in my opinion, and hopefully it helps you guys out when you, when you go to apply to a job. So let's jump right in. All right, so open up your internet browser and go to stackoverflow.com slash jobs. This is the website we're going to be using for this example. I'm going to be looking for a job for a front end developer since that's my primary skill set and what I'm best at. Sort by new, generally is what I do. Paid relocation, 100 to 150, but San Francisco, so totally negated. React nodes, social API, oh, social news desk. That sounds fun. React JS, yep, done that. JavaScript, yep. Social networking, yep. Worked with Twitter API. Angular, right. For this example, let's use Social News Desk full stack JS with front end emphasis. All right, so hop on over to Google Drive and click this new button up here. Let's just get the basics of a resume out of the way first. This is how I generally structure it. So name and info. All right, so we got my name, address, phone number, and email. So right below this, you want to have like a little summary area, just kind of a little blurb about yourself. If you've ever looked at LinkedIn, there's a little area below it that's a summary area, kind of just where you give a little description about yourself. You want to do that here, but just kind of keep it to like a sentence or two at max. So in this next area, in my opinion, you should put your skills. You want to put your skills front and center. You want your employer to be able to see what you know how to do. Uh, I have full stack experience, so I put a little bit of each one in there. So I put a little bit of, of front end and back end, and then I put my more soft skills like uh, project management. I have some UI UX experience. I put that in there. Um, with the soft skills, I put things like source control, like Git and Git flow, um, Scrum and Agile methodologies, um, GitHub, Jira, Bitbucket, those sorts of kind of software that you're familiar with. So here's kind of uh, an example of what I mean. Obviously the formatting is a little rough here. You'll maybe want to drop a table in here and do that. I just did it real quick by hand. Let me change this to make it look a little bit better, especially for a front end developer. You want to add a little bit of style on here. So let me go ahead and replace what I have right now with uh, something that looks a little bit more stylish. Okay, so we have our skills section. Your skills are gonna vary depending on what you did, computer science, a boot camp, self-taught. That's, that's all gonna be different. And this next portion is where I usually put my professional experience if I have any to list. If you're just out of college or boot camp or you don't have experience that's related to programming, I wouldn't put it. Unless you have some sort of IT job that's like with desktop support, something that you can get away with. If you're working retail or fast food or something like that, I wouldn't list it, not because those jobs are bad, but just because they don't really relate. And it's some people might tell you it's good to show a history of work, um, but I wouldn't waste the space putting that, especially when you're trying to keep your resume as concise as possible. So if you don't have any job experience and you're like a fresh college graduate, say computer science, I would put your capstone project on here or other projects from school, give a little description of what they do, and then the link to the GitHub. Same thing for a Code Bootcamp grad, put every single thing that you worked on in Code Bootcamp in here, and then if you're self-taught, I hope that you're teaching yourself with projects or that you have a code pen or something to show when you're applying to jobs. When you're listing your professional experience, you generally want to put your company that you work at and then the position and when you started and if you're still working there or when you quit working there. And then you want to have a description of what you did at that job. And there are these things called action words when you are making a resume. So you can just Google action words, dedicated, authored, clarified, composed. You kind of want to start your description with these action words here, like led daily standups and manage the team or teach students or review concepts or, or something like that, refactor. You, you want to use these, these action words in your resume. There's a whole bunch of them. Just, just Google them, you'll find them. So this is kind of the final structure of my resume. You'll need to flesh this information out and put what applies to you in there. So let me go ahead and swap this out for a actually like fully functional resume and you can kind of get an idea. But before I do that, let me just go over the three, the three key things here. If you're a college graduate, put your capstone projects and put your other 
class side projects in there. If you're bootcamp graduate, put every single thing that you worked on, except it, unless it's like the super basic CSS and HTML stuff, probably don't put that on there. Um, and then if you're like doing really basic JavaScript, don't put that on there. But every single app that you made at bootcamp, put that on there. If you're self-taught, you better have a project portfolio since that's going to be your only way at getting a job. All right, so here is my most current resume, and this is kind of what my most current resume looks like with all of the styling applied and my skills and everything that I've worked with. So these are reversed. So job one is what I'm currently doing, and then job five was my very first job doing Ruby on Ramp. And then I have my education, mechanical engineering degree from Finland, Dev Mountain, the boot camp that I went to, some side projects where I host a meetup, and then uh, I talk about my YouTube channel. Then I have some interest, filmmaking, editing, game development, kind of like that. And before I built this professional experience here, I just had a list of projects of everything that I've ever tried to make, basically. And that was it. It was, it was really short. Now it's two pages. Um, I'd like to keep it to one page, but so far, uh, as long as it doesn't go past this, I'm okay with it. All right, so what you're seeing here is my cover letter that I sent. This is what I call my passion cover letter. I don't really talk about the things that I've done at my previous jobs in terms of tech. I just talk about how I was hired and if I'm, you know, I talk about my motto as a developer and how I work and how I just love to code and I love the code that I write to be good code and not a mess and my kind of experience working with different types of code. And you, you can read it here. This doesn't really say a lot about the specifics of what I've done because I have the actual tech stacks that I've used inside of my resume. This is what I call my passion cover letter. So if I was using my passion cover letter here, I would talk about how I'm passionate about the environment, how I'm passionate about the work that they're doing, and I'd look at the job description and be like, oh, these are really cool technologies that you're using here. I'd really love a chance to learn them or I have learned them before. Just, you know, really passionate, really want to learn. And, you know, if they want to see your skills, they can look at your resume. For the more corporate thing, I would Google them. I would look deeper into this and I'd, I'd find their values, look at their page, look exactly to see what they're doing, and kind of talk about how my work history technologies match exactly what they're, what they're looking for. This is my more corporate cover letter. First, I start off with my values, kind of uh, what I believe in as a developer, and then I talk about my position and what I've done there, and then the technologies I've used at each position, just a, a broader overview than what my resume actually gives them. And uh, then at the end, I was government contractor for one of my positions and I wasn't allowed to push code in my personal GitHub. And some companies think that I'm just not coding and I have to make a note of that. Um, but, you know, I, I just tell them that I have this other side project that uses a lot of technology that I'm familiar with and you can check out my capabilities here instead. So corporate letter, has a lot to do with values that match what the company wants and the technologies that you've used that match what the company wants. The passionate cover letter just says, hey, I'm passionate about technology, passionate about what you're doing, and I, you know, I just wanna get, I just wanna get my foot in the door here, you know, I, I thrive when I'm a, a little fish in a big pond. Uh, I'll put links to these down in the description so you can kind of check out how I phrase things. Uh, required skills and experience. I don't really ever look at this. I mean, I look at it, but I don't really give it much thought. Uh, I more look at what they're doing, and if I'm excited about what they're doing, then I make sure to talk about that in my cover letter. Uh, as far as like what the requirements are here, they're going to give me a code test anyways. 90% chance of getting a code test. And so either I can do what I know there and worry about it then, um, because I'm not going to let this me off the job unless it says eight years experience and they go to my resume and they see that I haven't been coding for eight years. If, if, I, if I'm super excited about what they're doing, I'll still apply anyways. So that's basically it for how I apply to a job. Um, I didn't really feel like typing my cover letters out from scratch for this specific job because I kind of get nitpicky about it and I want to start getting you know really into detail here. So instead I'll put the links to my two kind of standard cover letters that I use and then kind of week depending on uh, the job that I'm applying for. Ho so hopefully this helps you guys. Hopefully you guys can kind of see how it's done, see how I structure my resume, especially with my more formatted resume. And you know, I take a cover letter and then I take a resume and I look at the requirements and I just don't really pay any mind to the years experience required. I just apply anyways if they say no. So what, you know, if it says eight years experience, but I think what they're doing is really cool. 
So what, apply anyways, and just be like, look, I, I know that you want eight years experience and I'm just out of boot camp, but hear me out for a second. Uh, I've actually gotten responses that way. So anyways, this has been a practical way uh, to apply to jobs. I was thinking of making a little mini series of reviewing someone else's cover letter and resume and I'll tell you what I think. Um, obviously, if I make a video on it, I'll redact all of the personal information or you can do that for me and I'll kind of review it. And you, you link me the job that you want to apply to, link me your cover letter, link me your resume, and then I'll review it and we'll make a video on it. And I think that could be a fun little series. So that'd be cool. I'll put, uh, put my email in the description. You can email it to me there or you can join the Discord. We do have a Discord. Link's in the description. We're always hanging out there. It's a pretty good time. And if you want to see more of these videos, just hit that little subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.